Hi, my name is Nancy Ogden West. I'm the Director of Business Development and Education for Color Lab Cosmetics. And I am here to talk to you today about the hydrolipidic skin care. And basically, what we're going to cover in this, come on, well, now it went ahead. Okay, so what we're going to talk about is what exactly is the hydrolytic barrier? Why is it important? Conditions that you will notice if it's depleted, what causes it, whether they're chronic or acute, what can you do about that, and what products are going to be effective for it? So first of all, what is it? It is a natural protective barrier that lays and resides on the very surface of the skin, your stratum corneum. It's made up of sebum, lipids, water, and sweat. So you want to think of it like a security guard for the skin. It stops bad things from entering and it protects all the good things inside. This includes protecting the skin's microbiomes, and there are trillions of microbes and friendly bacteria in the skin and how they impact the skin and look and function on a day-to-day -day basis. So why is it important? Well, a strong skin barrier is necessary to protect the skin and its contents. It protects it from damaging substances that would otherwise penetrate and absorb into the skin. It also helps keep it in nourishment, moisture, and in some cases, it allows bodily functions to take place. A necessary substance to be transferred to wherever they need to go. So a depleted hydrolipidic barrier is a major common denominator for when this, when this happens, the skin becomes increasingly weaker. Uh, it will accelerate aging, and none of us are looking for that, right? It shows signs of sensitivity, and healthy skin can look older than its years, and without a strong barrier to protect it, any skin care benefits are only temporary because they can be evaporated easier. So it's that protective coating that covers the skin. So what are some of the signs that you may see? What are the conditions? Redness is one of them. Stinging. I mean, sometimes I will tell, people will tell me that their skin just sometimes throughout the day has a stingy feeling to it. Or when they put products on it, it may sting. Now that could be, it's not the right product for their skin, but there can be a stinging. Dryness and dehydration, because you've removed that barrier that helps to protect the skin. And you can get more UV damage, uh, flakiness, irritation, you might see more visibility with capillaries on the surface of the skin, premature lines, flushing, and other signs of sensitivity or sensitized skin. So what can cause this? Well, these are chronic things that can cause it. You really don't have a lot of control over. Our skin is faced with many influences on a daily basis that effectively weaken and damage that hydrolophilic barrier and rob it of its protective abilities. So some are avoidable, some aren't avoidable, but chronic aging or genetic aging. Okay, so barrier breakdown is an unavoidable part of having a genetic sensitive skin type. And I don't know about you, but a lot of people are telling me they have skin sensitivities today. But that sensitive skin type also easily gets red, uh, irritated, flushed, and is reactive to things that you put on the skin. So some of the chronic disorders that can cause this would be something like rosacea, eczema, psoriasis, lupus, diabetes, and acne. So those are chronic conditions. But there's other things that are preventable, you know, that we do on the outside of our skin that we do create these problems on our skin. One of the most important ones is incorrect product use. You know, I find in talking with women, a lot of women who might have had oilier skin than when they were younger, as they mature in age, they still believe their skin is oily. Now, healthy skin has a natural glow and a shine to it. It's just not flat and matte. That's dehydrated dry skin that has a flat matte look to it. So sometimes when a client is seeing a shine on their skin, they're thinking, oh, I've got oily skin. 
and that is not necessarily true. So I find a lot of people will use skincare products where their skin may be combination or more towards a dry side, and they're using products for oily skin. Also, pollution and environmental uh, assaults are going to create problems for you at the same time. Another thing is over cleansing. Now, I don't necessarily find this with dry skinned individuals, but I definitely find that with oily skinned people. Think, oh, my skin is so oily. I need to wash it. I need to get all this oil off of it. And what they're actually doing is they're stimulating the skin more through overworking the skin in that manner through cleansing it too often throughout the day. So cleansing in the morning, in the evening, is all you need to cleanse the face. Unless maybe you've been out playing and you've been sweating or you've been working outside and, and you've got dirt and debris and various things like that, then yes, that's another story, okay? And usually at that point, I might cleanse the skin, put all my moisturization and serum products on the skin, and if I'm not going or doing anything for the rest of that day, I'm not gonna put makeup back on the face. I probably didn't have makeup on to begin with. Also, using products that are not correct for the skin type, as I talked about earlier, can strip the skin of its sebum that it has. Exfoliating too frequently will damage the skin barrier. When alpha hydroxy acids first came on the market, then I had excessively oily skin that would, my pores would clog and I would get blemishes, but I, I was taking pretty decent care, but I still had excessively oily skin. Uh, alpha hydroxy acid products came onto the market. And in the very beginning, when they hit the market, it was all about a very low pH and very high percentage. Many of the people like me, overused that product and ended up creating skin sensitivity for myself. Now today, of course, we've saw a lot of improvement on our understanding of the acids that are out there. And now we know that the pH doesn't need to be that low and the percentage doesn't need to be that high. We can do lighter exfoliation and get better results with it. Another thing is too aggressive or too much pressure with scrubs. You know, I, um, the health club that I had gone to, of course, we're not going to at this moment, I will watch women, you know, working on their face when I'm, I'm in, changing my clothes, whatever I'm doing at that point. And I cannot believe how rough they will work on their skin sometimes. So they need to slow down their movement, slow down their pressure, because if they're using scrubs on their skin, they can actually go in and scratch away that natural skin barrier on their skin. The other thing is overusing skincare tools like the rotating brushes or the hand mitts or the buff puffs. You know, again, I find people use them too often and they create too much pressure with them when they do use them. So it really is us educating this client. Also overusing certain products. You know, a lot of people think if a little's good, a lot's going to be great. Okay, and that's not necessarily true either. The moisturizers, it's hard to over moisturize the face. The skin's only going to absorb so much and the rest is going to sit on the surface. So I really find this more on the other side of, again, over scrubbing, um, over using acidic pills on the, on the skin, uh, ex, uh, really dry alcohol-based toners on the skin, things like that. Or again, going back to using the wrong products for the their skin type. Then there's things when you, you have medication that you need to take for cold, allergies, acne, things like that, okay, those can cause fluctuations in the oil production on the skin at the same time, dehydrating the skin and weakening that skin barrier. And then lastly, tanning. Well, we know tanning is not good for us whatsoever. And it is so important that we do use a sunscreen all the time. But being in the sun, and for those of us that are more mature in age, you know, we have found that we didn't have sunscreens when we were growing up. We were out there putting oil on our skin all the time, and so we created some major sun damage. Now, you young ones, it doesn't show until you start maturing in age a little bit more. So please think about that. And think about the tanning beds at the same time. I know we don't like to be light, especially when summer starts to come around and those tanning beds look so good. But I'm gonna recommend you go buy some self-tanner instead. Create that look with a self-tanner instead of going out in the sun and damaging your skin because we know that's what it does. 
Next, what can we do? Well, first of all, we need to start with educating the client, you know, to let them know what this hydrolytic barrier is. And we need to start them at a young age. Now, I have got to give these, some of these, not all, but some of these young people credit. You know, there's many young people that are into preventative care. They've learned from their mothers, their grandmothers, the importance of taking care of their skin. So that is so important. Yeah, so the other thing is, is that the skin, with a weakened skin, uh, barrier on it that it, it shows more signs of sensitivity, you really need to switch your products around, do a 360 change on that, and think a little bit differently of how to take care of their skin, or for them to how to take care of their skin, because you're gonna educate them on this. I have actually put this PowerPoint together to be more in depth, and I will be sending it off to you, because I think this is a great program that you can do for your clients. You know, our clients have become accustomed to going on to Zoom and watching programs or getting onto Facebook and doing things like that. Take this information that I'm giving you today, use it, do your own program for your clients. Okay, uh, other things that we can do is we can use a wide array of effective ingredients that target multiple target triggers sensitive. <laughs> we, I, I can mess that one all up. So we can use ingredients that really target multiple sensitivities on the skin. Okay, things that are calming and soothing like botanicals, ceramides and lipids, which help restore the barrier function and enhance moisturization and create and prevent moisture loss. Um, hyaluronic acid, sodium PCA, humectants that are gonna help retract moisture into the skin and plump the skin for us. And then things like squalene, jojoba oil, plant oil, which are natural smoothers and antioxidants. And they also target dryness without any irritation. And then lastly, vitamins A, C, and E, which we know nourish, protect, and have antioxidant protection at the same time. So what kind of skincare regime can you put together for this client that is going to work on helping to replace this barrier on the surface of the skin? First of all, think about your cleanser. African Red Tea Botanical Gel Cleanser is a great cleanser for that skin type. As you can see, it's a creamy, light foamy, antioxidant rich cleanser that gently cleanses, nourishes, and hydrates the skin. It also goes in there and deeply purifies and pampers the skin, infusing delicate nourishment into it. It has African red tea in there, which is rich in the enzyme superoxide dismutase, an excellent anti-aging substance and powerful antioxidant. Superoxide dismutase is necessary for the production of healthy cells and producing and fighting wrinkles and neutralizing your free radicals. Argelina is in here, which we know is a peptide, and that's firming and tightening the skin. Next, you've got your poppy seed extract, which also instantly firms the skin. White lily extract fortifies, protects, moisturizes, and regenerates the skin. And then prickly pear has a very high content of water binding compounds that make it a powerful humectant also that attract and retain moisture into the skin. That ingredient is also very high in vitamin B and vitamin A and C. And then lastly, it contains a key acidic acid, which is a powerful antioxidant that prevents the formations of free radicals and protects the skin from oxidative state, stress. So that, again, wet your, the hands a little bit, moisten the skin, pump into it, cleanse the skin, either splash it off or remove it with a wet washcloth. Next, daily dose skin nutrients. Now, for those of you um, that are doing custom blend, this is our ultra hydrated botanical complex. Okay, this can be used as a serum. It's a multifunctional serum for all skin types, but especially for dehydrated skin. It is a really potent blend of skin firming, hyperhydrating, wrinkle reducing ingredients that absorb instantly in the skin. And it is loaded with marine derived sodium hyaluronate that comes from the Condus crispus seaweed. So it produces a great moisture locking treatment. Now, when are you gonna use this? After you cleanse and tone, this is when you're gonna put on daily dose. Let it dry onto the skin, and then you will follow it with your moisturizer. 
that is unless you're using beauty oil. Beauty oil has become a very popular product for clients today. This one is specifically for your drier client. Okay, it's not for your oily skin client. It is pure and organic. It's a potent formula that is a perfect balance between the skin and oil, and it offers immediate moisturizing, softening, conditioning, and antioxidant protection. It's lightweight and highly concentrated. It's multi-purpose, and it contains 15 powerful organic oils and extracts derived from fruit, flowers, and plants. Lipids assist in repairing the intercellular lipid matrix in the lower layers of the skin and also the lipid barrier on the surface of the skin, the stratum cornea. So this also is going to help create moisture binding properties to the skin. It reduces water loss, loss and it improves the overall health of the skin. Now, one of those oils that is in there is lupin seed extract. And this stimulates and synthesizes collagen and is firming and is an anti-aging ingredient. We have had clinical studies done with this ingredient that show an increase of 92% with firmness, 72% sagging of facial contours after being used 42 times a day, two times a day. So beauty oil is a fabulous product to work with. And there's a lot of different ways to work with it. One, they can use it all by itself after they applied their daily dose serum onto the skin, then, then they can go in and your beauty oil comes in this bottle with a dropper in it. They can go in, I put a drop on the cheek, the forehead, the other cheek, and then blend that in. So they can use it by itself in that way. Or because remember our skin is constantly fluctuating, it, depending on our diet, our stress level, the outdoor condition of the weather, what's going on the inside with air conditioning or heating, it can dehydrate the skin. So maybe they're feeling a little bit drier. They can add anywhere from one, three to four drops into their moisturizer, blend it together and then blend that onto the skin. You know, another thing they can do is they could go in and add a drop or two into their foundation. Maybe they want to create a little bit more of a dewy look on the skin. But this is also good for any dry patches, eczema, psoriasis, conditions like that. If you're an esthetician, it's something you could also use for your facial massage because it has great slip and glide to it. So beauty oil is a wonderful product that has many different uses for it. Next, we have our Double Back Age Define Beauty Balm Cream. Now, this is a fabulous product. It has a lot of incredible ingredients in it. And I, for one, have noticed a major change in working with this. And I'm gonna talk about using it on my hand. And this is how I've noticed the change, okay? In custom blending, there's some products that I have a client put on because I'm a big person about texture and feel. And so, Beauty Balm is one of the products I have them try. Well, I have them put it, and I'm right-handed, so it goes on my left hand. I'm driving down the road one day, and I have both my hands on top of the wheel, and all of a sudden, I start looking back and forth, and I'm saying, my left hand doesn't show the pigmentation on it that it had, like my right hand still does, because I don't put it on that hand. And it really showed me how active that product was. So. If we look at this, it is a lightweight cream that primes, hydrates, lightens, firms, and invisibly improves the look and the feel of the skin. It actually does. It helps repair the skin texture and minimize the appearance of imperfections on the skin. So let's start right out here. It's got triple peptides of Dramaxyl, Argelene, and Matrixyl, which are firming and tightening on the skin. Next, you've got AC, goi berry, green tea, cucumber, and chamomile that are all calming and soothing to the skin. That's followed with some shea butter and olive squalene, which are very light lipids to help protect the skin. Then licorice root and bearberry extract are lightening agents. That's probably what help lighten that coloration on my skin, but it's a combination of all those ingredients that have a driving action too. And then lastly, it's got your prickly pear in there that I've been talking about, which is a powerful humectant and has a lot of vitamin B besides A and C. So it helps draw and retain moisture into the skin. Now, if they would want something a little more than just the Beauty Balm Cream, that's where you could go back 
to your beauty oil and have them add a few drops of beauty oil into the beauty balm. Next, we also have a grouping of what's called skin infusions. And there's four different, I'm gonna talk about three of them today. So the first one is hydrate. They come in this chrome bottle with a dropper on the top. And hydrate is for you to hydrate a dry skin. It has your sodium PCA in there, which is a humectant. And it's derived from a natural amino acid called proline, which is a very strong conditioning agent. Then it's got, again, our prickly pear in there, which we know is a powerful humectant that attracts and retains moisture into the skin, has a lot of vitamin B into it besides vitamin A and C. So it's got your antioxidant protection too. Jojoba oil is the closest thing to the natural sebum in the oil, which is non-greasy and easily absorbs into the skin. So where does this product fit in? There's a couple questions. I will get to those questions as soon as I finish this presentation. So where does this fit in? If you're using your daily dose, after daily dose is when you would put the skin infusion on. After that's on, if you want, you can go in and follow that with your beauty oil. So your skin infusions will fit after your daily dose before your beauty oil if you're going to use that or going right back in to your BB cream at that point. You can also take this if you want and put a few drops into the moisturizer and use it that way. Next, we have the in, in Skin Infusion Restore, okay? And that serum is to lift, firm, and tighten the skin. It has some soy protein in it, which is an instant flash firming effect to it. But long-term, what it does is it prevents and repairs the visible signs of aging while smoothing and nourishing the skin with a high content of amino acid in it. Next, it's got a peptide in it, tetrapeptide, which is gonna, gonna go in there and firm and tighten the skin. It's gonna increase the collagen production and last and synthesis for the cellular support within the skin. Again, this is used like a serum, like I just talked about, or a few drops can be added into your moisturizer. And then last is your skin infusion in Soothe. And this is for the client that has sensitive skin. So this serum improves and smooths and calms and restores the skin's suppleness. This has vitamins A, C, and E, which feed and nourish the skin and also have antioxidant protection. Chamomile, linden, calendula, St. John's wort, and cauliflower extracts soothe and condition the skin also. And then white lily extract fortifies, protects, moisturizes, and regenerates the skin. So again, this is a serum that can be used alone or it can be mixed in to your moisturizer or even your foundation at that point. So that's everything about the um, hydrophilic system. Now, let me go in and look at your questions that you have. So first of all, does double back replace fringe benefit or do we use both? It does not replace fringe benefit, okay? They call it a primer for the skin because it just the activity of it, but you're still gonna use an actual primer that is for makeup before you apply it on the skin. How clean are all these products is the next question. Well, we are known as a clean line, okay? Which means that we have some, um, natural ingredients, organic ingredients, and some man-made ingredients that have great benefit that do not irritate the skin. Next question, how do the infusions compare to the foundation additives? Okay, these are something that are separate. They can be added in for the, for the client who, uh, well, for our client, I should say, who's not doing custom blend. So that's where you might wanna sell it in that manner they can add into the foundation. But the other way you wanna look at it is an actual serum that they're going to apply onto the skin by itself, which has more activity in that manner. So where we're doing custom blend and we're adding it into our custom blend products, when you've got it like in this manner and you're using it full strength, it's going to have more strength and benefit to the skin. Next, could we please have a list of the order of application for these products? 
yes, I will put that together for you. Now, something else that I am doing is uh, you're going to get the slide series. And I recommend that you put a little program together yourself and do this for your clients. Again, whether it's over Zoom, you know, and our clients have become very accustomed to going on to Zoom today. Um, or if it's something you're going to do over Facebook. Okay, that's another direction that we're getting a lot of education out there. Okay, here's another question. How, okay, is a hy hydrolipic barrier the same as the acid metal? And that, that is a great question. Okay, if you think about the acid metal becomes a part of what creates a pH balance. It's the fatty acids in sweat, the amino acids of the skin, and the carbon dioxide excreted from the pores that give that surface layer a acidic tendency to it that we know ranges between 4.5 and 5.5. So it is, yes, it is part of the acid mantle, but there are other things that help create that. Okay, next question. Sometimes foundations will roll over applying uh, serum. The reason you might find that is they've used too much of the product, okay? So cut down the amount of product that you are using if, if that is a problem for the client or for you yourself. Next question, is pore perfection a replacement for primers such as fringe benefit? Pore perfection is a primer for your oily skin client. Fringe benefit, I want you to think of that as a primer for dry skin. For a long time, we just had the fringe benefit. But since we did come out with the pore perfection, that was made and that's a mattifying primer for your oilier skin. So they're two separate mattifier, or the pore perfector is for your oily skin, fringe is for your drier skin. Okay, somebody thanking me for the webinar. You're welcome. Now let me go over to my chat questions here. Okay. Um, how do we scroll up to view the previous page? I'm not, I don't know what you're talking about with that. Hmm, not sure we can. <laughs> Somebody else. Okay, here's another question. Will beauty oil help with the neck? Yes, it will help with the neck. Okay, because this is a very dry area on our body right through here. And but this would be a combination. I would not only use that, I would also, I would put that on and then I would go in and I would use the double back BB cream on it because of all the firming agents that are in there. All right. Next. Yes, and the question is that somebody thanking me for the presentation and asking, do these products protect the microbiome? Yes, they, they do. They help to protect it. It is increasing that. Again, it's going back to that hydrophilic lipid barrier on the skin that creates our protection and that's what we need to protect and that's what we need to focus on with the skin and that helps even create more benefit. So um, I it looks like I have another, some more questions over in my question section. Let me go back over there. I hope you've enjoyed this today. I, I really enjoyed putting it together for you. Uh, and the question, are these available for private label? Yes, they are. All of the products that I just showed you come out of our ready wear of our private label. So yes, you can uh, private label all of these products at the same time. Another question, can beauty oil be used under the eye or around the eye? Uh, you know what? I don't really like to put oils that close to the eye area. You could keep it a little bit lower, put it up onto the brow bone, up a little bit higher, but don't take it down onto the lid area. Think about the orbital socket where you can feel softness. Don't go past that area when you put it. De definitely around the outside where we get the crow's feet, or I like to call them smile lines myself. <laughs> okay. Okay, and somebody's really excited they're going to get these slide series to do their own webinars. Hey, and if you have any questions, get in touch with me. I'm, I'm happy to help and answer any questions for you. Here are a few more. Which product do you suggest be sprayed over the face or out to dry be, if it dries out? We have a facial spray that can be misted over the skin throughout the day, and it comes in a small bottle also. Or, you know, what you can do is we do sell small pump bottles that, that have a mist to them. 
you could buy a larger size and fill those. Because normally if you're carrying something like that, you don't want a big bottle to go along with that. Okay. Oh, some more chats over here. Let's see where those are going. Okay, I think I've answered every, every question that I can. If you would like to speak to me, this webinar, uh, as soon as I am recording it, as soon as it takes it, and sometimes it takes a couple of hours before I actually get it, then tomorrow or the next day, they'll be sending you an email. Now, hey, something I have to tell you. Since you are on this program today, we are offering you 20% off of any of the skincare products that I've talked about that you would like to purchase. So you have a code and it's Hydro20. Right. So when you talk to your sales consultant, just tell them you were on this webinar with me today and that uh, there is a code for a discount with your product. Again, it's Hydro 20 and you'll get 20% off on all of the skincare products that we have discussed. Now, if you do want to speak to me, my email address is nancy.west at colorlabcosmetics.com. My phone number is 330-554-1658. Now, you know, if I'm in a program or I'm working with a client live over the internet, uh, just leave me a message and I always work on trying to get back with you on the same day. So again, it looks like a minimum order. Yes, a minimum order does pertain to this. It is $150, which is great. So thank you so much for being with me. I'd love your interest and uh, have a great day. Happy summer. I'm going to be doing, I'm thinking on the 13th, a program for four trends to emerge from the quarantine. So that has to do a little bit more with makeup. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day.